5.30, I will call the uh, first public works meeting of this uh, session to order. Um, I'm going to start with roll call. Alder Peterson. Here. Alder Rust. Present. Alder Ramey. Here. And Alder Bellinger is not here. Uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, uh, since it's the first one and we've got some guests here, we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, I am Dean Decker, all the person from District 6, Chair of the Committee. I'm Dan Peterson, all the person from District 3. Zach Rust, uh, District 8. Angela Ramey, District 5. And oh, uh, co uh, Vice Chair. chair. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously qualified. <laughs> I'm Liz, this is legal. That's why I am. <laughs> Steve, Steve Jordan's a community, yeah. community member. I'm Tracy Burnett, also a community member. Jordan Skiff, Wastewater Superintendent. Tim Bull, City Forester. Uh, Joel Colsey, Street and Sanitation for DPW. Aaron Grohl, Interim City Engineer. Mm -hmm. Stacey Wesseljack, Administrative Clerk, DPW. Kevin Jump, Engineering. Okay. <clears throat> We'll move on to number five, approval of minutes from April 9th, 2024, for motion. I'll move. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair sure, votes aye. Those are approved. Uh, number six, resolution number 112425, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to communicate an interest in entering into a five year lease for a 2024 model Vector 2100i sanitary sewer maintenance vehicle for the Department of Public Works. Kevin, who's. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, I, uh, sure, I can, I can okay. talk a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. I'm just here to pay for it, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> for it. Okay. It's pretty. It's pretty. So this is one of our current units. We we have two of these units. This is the larger one. One the other one is a smaller unit. Um, back in 2014, uh, we had some older equipment and um, we we upgraded to these type of units and. Um, at that time, the decision was made to lease them. Um, so we've been leasing this vehicle since 2014. Not this particular one, but this is the second one we've had uh, five-year lease agreements for. Um, you know, the the equipment, a truck like that is about $600,000 right now. So um, we've found it very beneficial to um, lease them so that they're Maintained in tip-top shape, you know, it's one of those pieces of equipment that it acts as an emergency vehicle for us. Um, street flooding, sewer in the basement, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so they need to be working. Um, these units are also listed under the Sheboygan County uh, Management uh, as an asset for uh, if they have some kind of crisis type thing. So, um, you know, it's it's a very valuable piece of equipment for us. And, they're used every day and they get used hard. Um, they're becoming very, very sophisticated in terms of electronics and computerized. Um, and the, the maintenance of them really requires some special, uh, special training. So through the lease program, they do all of that, you know, and it works out pretty well. So this, this, the resolution before you tonight is, uh, really requesting some commitment from the council to um, uh, lease the vehicle um, as a commitment to build it, I guess, at this point, because the equipment right now is like a year and a half out to build them. So this would be terming at the end of 2025. Um, but in order for us to secure a spot in their build schedule of the truck, we need to provide some kind of commitment to them now. I just want to add to that that there is a provision in this resolution that notes that future councils can't be bound or can't be bound by a current council. So um, this is something that uh, Bernie Romer felt the vendor was comfortable with. It's language that's required by state law uh, because we cannot 
for example, we can't order a council in five years to make a certain expenditure. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only approve expenditures during the budget year that they are budgeted for. So that's in there as a, as a safety mechanism. Um, but I understand that the vendor is comfortable with the, the stated commitment despite that. So um, I guess my question, so they do all the maintenance, so do they come up here to do the maintenance or do you have to take it someplace? No, or? we take it to McQueen Equipment, which is down in uh, Menominee Falls. Okay. So if there's anything typically wrong with it, um, they, we would bring it there. Okay. So, okay. okay. Question, Zach, go ahead. Is, there a, is it better for us to lease it instead of outright buying it? Well, is there a positive to Yeah, I think the, the advantage of leasing is that it, um, a, we we eliminate the expensive cost of expensive repairs. Sure. Um, you know, we even with the ones that we've been leasing, there's been a lot of electronic snafus, okay. and you know sometimes it's best just to get it to the manufacturer as opposed to trying to figure it out for you know days. Um, I think that's the biggest advantage. Um, you know, and just I think the capital outlay of you know half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, probably at the time was uh, beneficial to go into leasing. Sure. So. And our next lease rate will reflect a significant value of the existing equipment that's being turned back to the manufacturer, so they're just gonna pay back or they buy back. Sure, all right. Yeah, I think um, depending how the lease turns out with this one, the remaining, what they would pay us for this one is Hundred and forty some thousand or something like that. And so that would offset. It the, offsets the okay. cost of the new one. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Looking for a motion. I to adopt the resolution. Second. Who's made and seconded? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number seven, resolution number 1324.5, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with J.F. Ahern for the installation of two turbo blowers at the wastewater treatment plant and authorizing an amendment to the 2024 budget. I guess this will be yours, Jordan. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, Alder Peterson, you weren't on the council back in September, but um, the others might remember that we asked for an emergency resolution then. Um, we have the space at the wastewater plant for four blowers, aeration blowers. At the time we had two blowers, one was being kind of temperamental, the other one was older. We experienced a fire in one uh, last April. So we were finding ourselves uh, pretty anxious about our capacity to provide oxygen in a critical part of the, of the wastewater treatment process. So Stacy put up one of the pictures from the plant. Um, Two things I wanted to kind of point out on this overview picture, the, the two buildings that you can see on either side of the walkway um, has both uh, blowers and then the electrical equipment to operate those blowers. So on the left are, for some reason, uh, blowers three and four, and on the right are blowers one and two, um, or the spaces for those. Um, and so each of those two buildings has currently one blower that's working and then a, a vacant space available or another blower. I also want to point out on this picture that uh, you see the bubbles in the wastewater on either side of, of that walkway. Uh, like I said, this is a critical part of the wastewater process. This is adding oxygen to the water to help microorganisms remove what's called biological oxygen demand, uh, phosphorus, nitrogen from the wastewater so that we can meet permit requirements as that water continues on its way to Lake Michigan. So I mentioned to people that tour the plant that this is one of two areas in the plant where I see our folks get anxious if there's anything going wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a very critical piece of the puzzle. And then um, around that same time that we brought this resolution to you, I found out from uh, consulting engineer Donahue that the DNR has expectations for how much capacity we have to provide this air. And we were short essentially. Um, having two blowers the size that we had could handle most demand, but if there was a period of high demand, we might be short. And especially if a problem happened with another one of those two remaining blowers, we were um, in pretty rough shape. So fortunately, the city council in September approved that emergency resolution, which authorized us to buy two blowers, which were available, which is unheard of. Usually this is at least a six month lead time, but they were available for us to purchase 
right around then. And so actually we've had these blowers delivered and on site now for several months. Um, we also had a budget amount as part of that resolution of $600,000. Um, at the time we hoped that the purchase of the blowers would be about 400,000, which is what it was. Uh, but we hoped that the installation of those blowers would be about $200,000. And quite a few changes have come along since then as Donahue started designing the actual installation that changed that number quite a bit. And so this resolution that we're asking you to approve tonight and take back to council next week, both authorizes the low bid for the installation to go to JFA Hearn, um, and then also to approve a, an increased budget amount for this. And so the picture that Stacy's gone to shows, um, it shows our current facility. Some of the burned equipment is still uh, outside the building where, where we kept it just in case the insurance company wanted to see it or anything like that. Um, but a couple things to point out on this picture. Uh, a couple of the changes that Donahue's design brought to light are that you can see that big uh, vertical pipe along the right side of the building. That's what takes uh, air from the atmosphere and puts it into the blower that is currently in that building. Um, Donahue recommends that the, the very top of that pipe where it actually um, brings in the air should be uh, configured differently to allow more air to come in. Also, there's a strong recommendation that we have a platform actually built around that pipe right at the roof level to allow staff to get out there and maintain that pipe. Obviously, you can see that um, it is not accessible at this point. It's hard to tell, but to uh, underneath that is about a 15 foot uh, clarifier, uh, but 15 feet deep. So if, if somebody were to be working out there, obviously it's just not a safe place for, for an employee to work. It's also not a, a place where we can put scaffolding or things like that. And so um, the platform on actually both on this building and then on the one you know outside of the picture on the opposite side of the walkway um, is, is a strong recommendation that add quite a bit of expense to that installation contract. And then, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the term louvers, but the kind of the panel or the louvers that you see there on that corner of the building um, was part of the old uh, blower that actually had the fire. And that was the way that we got air into that blower. But the new blower is going to be different in getting air similar to what we see with that intake pipe that you see there. So basically removing this louver and, and the grid above it and replacing that with block wall um, also added a significant amount of expense to the project. So, and then Stacy, if you don't mind going to the third and the last, this isn't a great picture, but this is that same building um, showing the existing blower in the background and then the space obviously for another one to be installed right in front of us. Um, that same louver is there on the right side of the picture um, one thing that isn't easy to tell from this picture is that um, some of the new piping for the new blower will actually go up through existing penetrations in the roof, which actually had is a good way to do it, but might have some expense with it. And then this doorway um, is barely large enough to bring the new blowers in. And so um, we anticipate that the contractor will have to remove the framing. Um, fortunately, the doors themselves are probably big enough, but the framing will have to be removed. So mostly I wanted to show these pictures, just um, we are asking for just over $300,000 more uh, for, for the overall expense. Again, the blowers were about the $400,000. We had hoped the installation would be about $200,000. Instead, that's more like $400,000 when you account for engineering to go with that. And then also it's not really visible in pictures, but we have an opportunity to up, update our uh, programming, our controls for all four of these blowers to have them coordinate well, to make them much more energy efficient. Um, and so that was a, an opportunity, I guess, that came to light after we had brought the emergency resolution to you guys last uh, September. So that adds, you know, between the programming and the purchase of some new programmable logic probably another $80,000 to $90,000. So all told, um, again, we're asking for JFA Hearn's contract to be approved as well as about that extra $300,000 in funding. Um, last point is that there's an emergency uh, equipment replacement fund that all wastewater plants are required to have. 
the money for this up to this point and including this work would come from that. And then we would have to reimburse that with um, probably with fund balance from the wastewater fund, which has been pretty healthy. Um, you may have heard that Ellers is going to help us with reviewing our, our overall wastewater funding. Um, and this will certainly be a key part of that. So I know I've thrown a lot of information at you. I just, I know it's a big change from what we presented to you six months ago. So I wanted to try to give you some of the context for um, why we're asking for a significant change. Thank you, Jordan. I think that when you run into project like projects like this, this kind of stuff happens. <laughs> it not always. We, we so like taking some, your bathroom apart. Yes. <laughs> once you start, <laughs> once you start yeah. doing the work, it doesn't always go as, as you as you want it to do, and that, that, that happens. But it's, I think it's a critical piece of equipment. I think keeping our our wastewater treatment plant up to date and, and running properly is uh, is very uh, very key. Exactly. So I understand that Ahern has a division for PLCs and automation and stuff like that, but who's doing the power for Ahern to get your power to the new blowers? The power is existing. And so, um, but I assume you're going to have to hook it up, right? Right. So they're going to have to sub that out, right? That will be part of Ahern's contract. I think they've subcontracted with people electric okay. to right. do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Um, looking for a motion then. I move to approve. I'll second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number eight, resolution number six 2425, resolution authorizing the city forester to apply for an inflation reduction act urban forestry grant from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, designated city forester as the city's authorized representative for same authorizing staff to undertake the steps necessary to comply with grant requirements. Kevin. Yes, thank you. So the, the DNR has this big opportunity. It's the first time, <clears throat> could be the only time, uh, due to the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, so the DNR has like $4 million that they're, they're going to be giving out to Wisconsin um, communities and, and uh, not, uh, yeah, 5013C, whatever they're called. Um, <laughs> sorry. The So anyway, we have an opportunity to apply. We could apply for up to 500000 but um, I've been I've been uh, working at this for a while now, and the DNR really wants us to not overreach. They want us to really be able to spend what, we are, what we're going to potentially be given, because there won't be an opportunity to extend the timeline of when we can spend it. So I've come up with a number of just shy of three hundred thousand dollars to apply for, and that would do five. There'd be five key parts to that. So one would be to hire a company to do a tree planting site inventory for us throughout the city um, that would show us hopefully at least five hundred. I mean, I'm sorry, at least five thousand planting sites that are available. Uh, then we'd the we'd hire a contractor to remove some stumps that we have. We have a, quite a few stumps in the city. And this grant specifically, anytime you do like tree work in this grant, it has to be within these disadvantaged areas of the city, which is roughly half of the city. And um, so there's about 220 stumps in that half of the city. So we look to get those ground out and restored for us this, this year yet. And then we would plan to replant those at a five to one ratio. So we'd be planting over a thousand trees. So the, the, the grant would pay for the trees, we would plant them ourselves, but um, that would be that would give us a five to one ratio. And so obviously if it one stump, you'll probably only replace that with one tree, but with that inventory, we'll, we'll know other available sites and we'll be able to, to put the additional four trees for every stump in those areas. Uh, another part of this grant is to continue our ash treatment that we've been doing, our insecticide treatments and in our our older like heritage ash trees that we're trying to retain as long as possible and the last part is public outreach so we're going to plan to have meetings with the community neighborhood groups and parent teacher organizations from throughout the city especially in these in these um, disadvantaged areas to to make the public aware of what we're doing why we're doing it and, and even ask them to help if they're willing by um, pledging to water a tree that's planted near their home or like even to keep an eye on trees, sometimes they're vandalized or, or damaged. 
So that's, and I do have two partners for this grant, the uh, Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force and the Sheboygan Rotary Club Restoration of Our Trees Sheboygan. So they're partnered with this application. Um, I, that's what we're, that's, oh, it's a, it's a three-year deal too. So we, if we're awarded it, we can start doing work in September of this year and the work would have to finish at the end of September of 2027. So it's kind of a long-term thing. There's no match requirement so it's 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 really um, a unique opportunity thank you tim i think this is a really I think this is i mean this is a win, win, win all the way around this is money we're going to get that to, to basically help help us you know replenish the trees that we've lost and to help uh you know care so i'm really for this go ahead Angela. i've got a question and a comment yeah, yep. uh question is you said that they'll pay for the trees but do you get to pick the trees yes okay we would, we would pick the the species that we want yeah cool, 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 cool. and then um like uh i think it's awesome the idea of like partnering with a parent and teacher um i've got two young children and they do a, a really big arbor day thing so i think that could be some amazing programming around that so just a comment yeah schools are always fun to partner with, oh, with for especially sure. for arbor day Kids yeah very excited about it we got we got a tree we have to plant it yet <laughs> yeah. any other comments okay I'm looking for a motion. I move to approve. Second. Been seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Next meeting date, May 28th, 2024, seeing as we've exhausted the uh, agenda, we're looking for a motion. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, everyone. Woo.